Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's take our seats. Thank you very much. <clears throat> mm. Your Excellency, uh, our good friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity on behalf of the government and the people of Kenya to welcome all our guests from the U.S. and from all other destinations that have joined us in this very, very important summit uh, between the Kenya government and the American Chamber of Commerce, which I have been informed is a regional uh, summit for East Africa. I am delighted to be here this afternoon for this summit, a unique event that showcases the vibrant, dynamic, and growing Kenya-United States partnership. The American Chamber of Commerce Regional Business Summit reinforces our relationship, which stands firmly on the sound foundation of shared values, including commitment to liberty, democracy, and free enterprise. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, we had a virtual meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden and other world leaders at the Democracy Summit, where I underscored our commitment to constitutionalism and the rule of law and respect for institutions. This summit is important because the government of Kenya has embraced and is aggressively implementing the plan for the bottom-up economic transformation of Kenya. We committed to transform the economy by creating a business-friendly environment. Under our plan, we are building the blocks to create wealth. We are already creating jobs and attracting local and foreign investors. We identified five broad sectors in which we shall channel strategic investment to catalyze and maintain high rates of economic growth and performance. The plan, therefore, requires huge investment under various innovative frameworks so as to achieve, among many things, the following. Number one, to transform our agro-industrial productivity and to enhance our food security. Number two, to actualize universal health coverage, including the production of medical commodities and biomedical supplies. And I was very happy that I met companies that want to work with us in this space uh, this afternoon. The digital superhighway and last mile fiber infrastructure. Again, I was very happy to meet tech companies that will take advantage of this platform to enhance e-commerce and to create opportunities for our tech-savvy, youthful population. Of course, the micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises that form the base and the foundation, employing close to 80% of our population, is a critical cog of what we must achieve while ensuring that we construct at least 200,000 housing units every year, both to create jobs, to expand the economy, and to create livelihoods for millions of our citizens. Underlying these five pillars is a commitment to complete an ambitious program of infrastructure development covering transport, and communication. I just came back this morning from signing an agreement that will give us about 350 million shillings to do our BRT that will be working on e-mobility. <laughs> Among various implementation formats that we have, been adop uh, that we have uh, adopted, the public-private partnership model has emerged as particularly effective in aligning opportunities with appropriate incentives 
and in mobilizing necessary finances to achieve win-win outcomes under conditions where we have limited fiscal space and therefore mobilizing the private sector to come with their expertise and resources so that together we can supply public good is an intervention that we cherish and I am very confident that this summit has discussed, among other things, the opportunities available in our PPP framework. I am here to invite you, ladies and gentlemen, to seriously consider these opportunities, take advantage of our excellent bilateral relations, and partner with us in this exciting journey. Several reasons which speak to the defining features of the means as well as the ends of this program and projects motivate this invitation. We are particularly interested in ecological, ecologically responsible approaches to development and the application of techniques and frameworks which enhance sustainability, strengthen resilience, and promote environmentally responsible productivity. I am confident that in this room, I am speaking to leaders of enterprises whose business propositions combine profitability with sustainability, innovation, and ecological responsibility. I further wish to elaborate on the context of the opportunities on offer in Kenya generally and in the context of our plan. We are, as has been said, the gateway to our region and our continent by virtue of our incomparable geostrategic position Kenya offers the most advantageous location to set up whether you are interested in domestic market, East Africa, Comesa, SADC, the Horn of Africa, or anywhere else in the continent of Africa. It is a fact that many global multinational firms, international organizations and NGOs find Nairobi a rational and strategic choice for their headquarters and operational hubs. They are not wrong, neither would you be. Kenya's advantageous location has been optimally complemented by a nation of well-educated, highly skilled, hospitable, and enterprising people. Communication is easy, and our labor force is famously agile and flexible. Our Kenyan workforce has and remains probably the greatest strength that we have as a nation. In addition to this attractive package of compelling attributes, we have undertaken tremendous investments to develop transport, communication, and energy infrastructure. We are connected by a good network of ports, railways, roads, and airports spread all over the country. Kenya is also supported by a good energy mix that is 92% green and on the way to becoming 100% green by 2032. Wind and geothermal power generation potential is abundant, including hydro generation resources. As you can see, we are not just a gateway by virtue of geographical accident. We are intentional about refining and strengthening our strategic advantage because Kenya is open for business. This is to say that Kenya is interested in and committed to promoting the best operating environment for business enterprises and that our policy and institutional framework is designed to make Kenya the most competitive investment destination. It is also to affirm that we are determined to deliver on every single undertaking, commitment, and pledge that we make to any stakeholder, be they citizens, communities, businesses, or our international partners like the ones we have in this room this afternoon. My friends, Kenya is not only open for business, we also mean business. <laughs> <clears throat> 
But there is more work to be done. Private sector players make long-term investment decisions in an environment with predictable policies, among them tax policies. My administration is finalizing a new tax policy guideline that have gone through various stakeholder consultations, including inputs from AMCHA. This policy that will enhance transparency in our tax regime will take effect by June 2023, that is this year, and we will, it will be in place for a minimum of three years, at least. We're doing this so that you can make your investment decisions knowing exactly how the tax regime will look for the next three years. The growth of digital commerce has forced many countries to impose digital service tax measures on income derived in their tax jurisdictions. Kenya has also done the same. But following discussions with players in this sector, we have made a commitment to review this tax regime and align it with a two-pillar solution currently being developed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is an inclusive framework. The framework will guide the taxation of digital commerce transactions going forward once the negotiations are complete. I know many people know what I'm talking about, um, and we have made this policy shift because we consulted and we listened, and we want to create a win-win partnership. One of the key challenges of, uh, for business community has been the issue of tax, especially VAT on exported services. This tax not only renders us uncompetitive as a country, but it also inhibits investors seeking to make Kenya their regional or global services hub. Many companies are already operating out of Kenya and servicing regional markets. Following consultations again with stakeholders, VAT on exported services will be removed in the finance bill. Let me take that again. <laughs> Maybe I would get some more applause. <laughs> Following consultations with stakeholders, VAT on exported services will now be removed in the finance bill in the coming budget in June this year. The issue of tax refunds has remained a thorn in the flesh for many companies. Not local companies alone, even foreign companies and, and many uh, corporates that work with us. The government of Kenya is making again a policy shift on this matter. And as a result, effective June this year, all verified tax refund claims will be payable within six months. I know that has been said somehow before. But let me say this additionally. If for whatever reason a refund is not made by the Kenya Revenue Authority within this period, the taxpayer can offset their claim against future tax liability without further application to the Kenya Revenue Authority. <laughs> the statement I am making is that if it is okay for you to pay your tax in time, it must be okay for you to get your tax refund in time. And if we fail, for whatever reason, after you have paid your tax in time, 
I am saying after six months, all verified tax refunds you can net off from what you are supposed to pay to the government of Kenya. That way, we will eliminate any possibility of tax refunds outstanding for more than six months. And uh, I think that is, uh, we have taken that policy position because I have had this challenge of tax refunds ever since I became part of government. The government of Kenya is keen to make Kenya the top innovation hub on the continent and attract new ideas, often executed by startup companies. However, I have received complaints that we impose what we call employee benefit tax on allocated shares to employees of startup companies, even before any value is realized on these shares. I'm proud to announce that the government of Kenya will exempt startup companies from paying taxes. The government of Kenya will exempt startup companies from paying taxes on such unrealized gains on employee allocated shares starting July 1 this year. I know I'm speaking to many Kenyan startups. I know I'm also speaking to many startups from everywhere in the world. It's only fair that we give these startups a chance to be by not imposing unnecessary restrictions, especially when initially they are not able to pay as much for their employees, and in exchange, they want to allocate some shares. It's not fair for anybody to be asked to pay tax on shares that you have been allocated before you sell the shares. I think you can only pay tax when you, when you sell the shares. I am committed to make Kenya one of the most attractive places to do business. As you may know, Kenya has been ranked the third most attractive place to do business in Africa by World Bank under its ease of doing business scheme. We continue to build on this success story. We are also reviewing our special economic zones and export uh, processing zones laws to remove impediments to attracting new local and foreign investments. The raft of amendments are under stakeholder consultations, and Moses Kuria can, uh, will bear me witness, and we intend to have a new set of incentives by July 1 this year. The national ICT policy requ uh, requires foreign ICT entities that set up in Kenya to have a 30% domestic equity. This position is untenable and has made it impossible for large corporations to invest in Kenya. As a result, we will review this position and remove the requirement of 30% equity to facilitate greater investment in the ICT sector. And additionally, our data protection law is aligned to support robust growth in data storage. I am sure that AWS have something to report. In fact, I was persuaded by a good gentleman from Amazon Web Services that it was impossible for Amazon to cede 30% equity to any entity they didn't have a business relationship with. And as a result, they were holding their investment in our country. I hope uh, Amazon, now that uh, I have kept my part of the bargain, <laughs> now that I have kept my part of the bargain, I hope you keep yours.
And it's not just about Amazon. It's about all other ICT companies that want to invest in our country. <laughs> Kenya has one of the most developed financial services sector in the continent. We are ripe for the establishment of an international financial center in Nairobi to attract global financial players. To continue to reinforce this strong position, we are working with the organizations such as Financial Action Task Force to ensure Kenya fully complies with the relevant international standards on money laundering and terrorist financing activities so as to make this international financial center a reality. And Moses Kuria has marching orders on what he needs to do for us to make this reality. And to cement our partnership in trade and investment, the American Chamber of Commerce, the Government of Kenya, and the United States have today, right in front of us here, launched a trilateral business dialogue to address and resolve the challenges of U.S. investors and businesses in Kenya. This new trilateral platform, scheduled to meet every three months, will serve as a key convening body to jointly tackle investment challenges and is a demonstration of the government of Kenya's commitment to hearing directly from the U.S. business community. I wish to affirm that we are determined to deliver on every single undertaking, pledge, and commitment, both to our friends and to all our citizens. I will now cover a few areas where interesting activities is taking place to highlight the opportunities and progress in Kenya. We are interested in modernizing food production to achieve food security and anchor agro-industrial manufacturing. The lifting of the long-awaited ban on GMO crops is intended to bestow the benefits of safe technology to support agricultural abundance. The Kenya food exports to the U.S. increased by nearly 10% in 2022 to reach U.S. dollars 190 million. There are opportunities to leverage U.S.-Kenya investments and collaboration to grow the agricultural sector and take full advantage of the U.S. market. Del Monte, for example, the largest private sector employer in Kenya has invested US dollars 5.5 million in a new state of the art fruit packaging facility as part of its diversification program. The facility has a processing capacity of 60,000 metric tons of fresh fruits and vegetables a year and has created 280 jobs already. Del Monte's plan is to source pineapples, avocados, mangoes, French beans from local growers in Moranga, Kiambu, Machakos, and other counties, engaging about 2,000 farmers. I am delighted to share that Kentegra, that was already mentioned by Moses, a U.S.-Kenya company at the forefront of restoring our country's position as the leading producer of organic pyrethrum insecticides is building a new pyrethrum refinery in Nakuru. With support from the U.S. government, this refinery will benefit about 90,000 farmers in five counties. I had the privilege, uh, I had the privilege to connect uh, Ambassador Meg with the five governors um, so that they can um, provide scale for this, for this factory. And in fact, as the Nakuru governor Susan Kehiga said in January when she announced the new investment, and I quote her, I am a very big champion of pyrethrum, and I am convinced we can make it one of our main cash crops and best money maker again. This reminds us of where Kenya was a few years ago. The Kenya-US partnership is at the center 
of this industrial revival. Synergy, a U.S. investment and innovative company founded by young Massachusetts Institute of Technology graduates that turns waste into fertilizer, fuel, and animal feed, will expand their farm and organic waste collection more than doubling their production of affordable, locally produced agricultural inputs to, benefit, to the benefit of at least 10,000 farmers. The expansion of the factory will also create at least 300 new jobs. <laughs> Leveraging U.S. agriculture and green technology solutions can help Kenyan farmers adapt to drought and climate change. For example, the partnership with U.S. solar irrigation company Sun Culture will expand their pay-as-you-go model to make this technology accessible to more than 10,000 Kenyan farmers with the potential for increasing their yields and incomes by up to 40%. <laughs> Hello Tractor, a company, the first lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden visited when she was in Kenya last month, is an Arctic company that connects tractor owners and smallholder farmers through its tractor sharing application. With John Deere, they are scaling up operations throughout Kenya, combining Hello Tractor's ability to unlock the last mile of digital agriculture with John Deere's sector know-how and investment creates significant opportunities to add additional services to smallholder farmers, such as climate smart agriculture, operator training, and agronomist services. I procure the largest agricultural supply chain platform in rural Africa will scale up its distribution model to reach an additional one million smallholder farmers in Kenya with affordable agricultural inputs. I was amazed when I came across this uh, great uh, investment in Western Kenya and what they are doing. I am also excited about the U.S. company Victory Farms. People may not know that Kenya is home to the fastest growing aquaculture company in sub-Saharan Africa. Victory Farms is producing high-quality tilapia, empowering communities and also creating employment. New investments secured into Victory Farms will see them quadruple their production, creating thousands of jobs for women entrepreneurs while supplying affordable, safe, and high-quality fish protein to millions of Kenyan consumers. <laughs> and of course, the big story, the apparel sector, is soaring and primed for even more growth. Kenya's 2022 apparel exports to the United States hit an all-time high of U.S. dollars 544 million, a 21 percent increase from 2021. And over 60 percent of our exports to the U.S. last year. And by the way, the U.S. is now Kenya's largest export market, importing 892 million worth of goods, U.S. dollar worth of goods from Kenya last year. We also imported, we're not doing badly, we, we also imported U.S. dollars 600 million of goods and services from the United States last year. This is balanced by all indications. And this is sustainable trade with lots of room for growth. Iconic U.S. brands are sourcing in Kenya, including Kenfield Klein, Levi, Lee, and Wrangler. Specifically Wrangler, because I have two, three shirts in my wardrobe. <laughs> in recent years, new factories like MAS and Heller have entered the market, creating more than 12,000 jobs in the past two years. 
Since I came in the of, into office, new partnerships have been launched with a number of leading manufacturing companies, including the aforementioned MAS and Mega, Coastal Apparels, UA, UAL, that will create an additional 20,000 jobs and increase exports by an additional US dollars, 200 million, in the next two years. And I must give credit, due credit, to Mac Whitman. If there was, if there was a possibility for one ambassador to represent two countries, <laughs> Mac, Mac Whitman would be one of them. She has ably represented the U.S. And she has, in a very sterling way, represented Kenya. We are also working with the best, with best cooperation on a new apparel manufacturing facility in Kenya to be launched mid this year, with plans to hire another 2,400 new employees. Kohino Elastics the first elastic manufacturing investment in Kenya in a long time will be launched this year. Additionally, U.S. company NextGen will build a state-of-the-art apparel level and packaging facility that has already broken ground and will be operational by September. <laughs> Let me talk a, a bit about innovation. From the silicon savannah to the green energy sector, many innovative companies are already calling Kenya home. Like agriculture and apparel, there is huge growth potential in this uh, priority sector. Kenya is a global leader in clean energy solutions. U.S. companies are big investors in Kenya and East Africa's off-grid sector, with more than 40% market share. These companies are providing millions of people with access to life-changing benefits of power in rural Kenya. In the past year, these companies have provided more than 860,000 Kenyans with access to off-grid connections and worked with industry leaders to raise more than 120 million US dollars for the development of the sector. U.S. company Delight alone will support at least an additional 600,000 households to access clean energy solutions. <laughs> Milele Energy, a U.S. company, has just concluded a deal to acquire part of the Turkana wind power project, one of the largest in Africa and producer of over 20% of Kenya's electricity in 2022. <laughs> this is together with plans for expansion, Symbion Power, another American company, is closing in on a deal to develop a geothermal plant in our Rift Valley. I am also delighted that plans are moving forward for Kipeto 3, right here in Gong, a new 50 megawatt grid connected wind power plant with an integrated battery storage component for the first time. In January, Africa's largest network of interconnected data center facilities, Africa Data Centers, announced they were expanding their presence in Kenya by opening a new second data center in Nairobi. The data center and several more we are expecting in the coming months will further serve as the backbone of our Silicon Savannah future, providing secure digital infrastructure and open, interoperable, and reliable internet. In fact, at our leading 
private-owned special economic zone, Tatu City in Kiambu County, CCI Global, the largest business processing outsourcing company in Kenya, is doubling its workforce from 8,000, from 4,000 to 8,000. I had a conversation with Tatu City and we are finalizing some incentives for them so that we can bring additional outsourcing companies into our country because we have the best workforce anywhere in the world and we are very proud of it. In the next year, again, CCI will add 4,000 jobs in Kenya for American clients like United Airlines, Spirit Airlines, JetBlue, AT&T, and Shipt. These are new jobs for young Kenyans, largely between 18 and 24 years, who are, an, who are known by international brands for their highest level of customer service. Thanks to CCI and its American clients, Kenyan hospitality has gone global. <laughs> On the Silicon Savannah, I know Kenya can further hone our technology ecosystem to attract business and become the premier destination on the continent for big tech companies and vibrant startups, full stack software engineering, quality assurance, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, e-commerce, fintech, arctic, sales and marketing, and finance jobs. And that is why we are rolling out an extra 100,000 kilometers of broadband connectivity to make it possible for these fintechs to work with us. And looking forward to Africa's future, Kenya is also the continental leader in e-mobility and two and three wheeler electric vehicle and buses. As I told you, we just came from Brussels to expand discussions around e-mobility and to make it possible for us to continue to lead the way in ensuring that we green not just our grid, but we also green our roads and rail. We are home to over 30 e-mobility companies, including industry leaders like Kiri If, Rome, Basico, Acride, Powerhive, while attracting regional players like Ambassand, who expanded into the Kenyan market with U.S. support, and U.S. electric vehicle industry leader, Rivian, who has e-safari vehicles operating in Kenya. I was lucky to be in one of them recently. These companies and many others are raising significant capital, transforming Kenya and transforming Africa's future. Finally, I want to highlight the medical and pharmaceutical sector where I have a major announcement to make today. It is with pleasure that I announced a finalized deal between Moderna and the government of Kenya to build a $500 million mRNA vaccine facility in Nairobi. <laughs> because of this facility and what we had to put in it. I've never had as many sleepless nights <laughs> and so much trouble from Ambassador Meg Whitman. <laughs> I am very happy that finally this is done. This will be the only such facility on the African continent and for Moderna their first factory outside the United States. <laughs> Moderna's close to 70 billion investment will be a catalyst 
for the medical and pharmaceutical industry, not just in Kenya, but in our continent. This is truly historic. This is... This is major. This is my administration's vision for the future of Kenya. And for the record, MCC is on the way. I think we are in the final stages of uh, finalizing um, that the negotiations around MCC. I will be consulting with um, our legislature to provide the necessary legal framework for us to actualize that investment, again, by the U.S. government. It is now my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to in invite a great lady. I have had many meetings with her, Shannon Klinka of Moderna, to virtually share some insights on this investment and append her signature virtually on the agreement. Your Excellency, Dr. Rodriguez, the Honorable Ambassador Whitman, other cabinet secretaries, representatives of the U.S. government, and distinguished guests. As the steward of Moderna's global public health strategy, it is my distinct pleasure to join you to finalize our agreement to establish an mRNA manufacturing facility in Kenya. This is a momentous occasion marks the promise of Moderna's first mRNA manufacturing facility in Africa. And it is grounded in our commitment to being part of the ecosystem that supports the public health needs of Kenya and all people across the African continent. This agreement is a key pillar of Moderna's global public health strategy. With it, we will bring mRNA innovation to Africa to address the areas of high unmet need such as acute respiratory infections, as well as persistent infectious diseases like HIV and outbreak threats such as Zika and Ebola. It also demonstrates our great confidence in the investment climate in Kenya and the importance of utilizing mRNA technology to build resilience in health security in Africa. Our shared desire for a healthy ecosystem for vaccines development and manufacture for the continent is amplified by the expanding role of the industry in East Africa. Moderna is building towards regionally responsive manufacturing. And with this agreement, we now have commitments to establish mRNA manufacturing facilities in Kenya, Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States, furthering health security around the world. Moderna has spent more than a decade refining our mRNA platform to accelerate the pace and success of mRNA medicines. The speed, scale, and flexibility of our mRNA platform is uniquely suited for rapid response to serious international epidemics. We will prioritize development efforts against pathogens identified as persistent global health threats, including HIV, tuberculosis and malaria, neglected tropical diseases, and the priority pathogens of the World Health Organization and the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. And we are committed to advancing into clinical studies a portfolio of 15 vaccine programs targeting emerging or neglected infectious diseases by 2025, advancing vaccines that address current diseases of significant impact mm. to low- and middle-income countries and those that prepare for serious international epidemics. We have much work to do together as we strive to enable access to manufactured mRNA vaccines in Kenya and to build the capability to rapidly scale and respond to public health emergencies in the continent and around the world. Your Excellency President Ruto, on behalf of Moderna's Board of Directors and our CEO, Stefan Bansal, we are very grateful to you and your government for your vision and partnership in this endeavor. And we are also deeply grateful for the leadership of the Honorable Meg Whitman and for her instrumental support of me and of this project. Partnerships like this one are essential to exploring the possibility of mRNA 
to tackle the world's greatest global public health threats. I look forward to all that is ahead of us as we work together to positively impact human health. Thank you. Let me invite uh, Moses Kuria, Cabinet Secretary for Investment, and the Principal Secretary for Investment. Hang on, Shannon. You're not going anywhere yet. Uh, to join me here on stage, and Ambassador Meg Whitman, with a lot of humility, please. Shannon, are you there? I am Some tech experts need to tell us how a virtual signing ceremony is done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's how it looks. <laughs> thank you, Shannon. You've been exceptional. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. As, and as a lifelong hustler, I understand business. The Kenya government understands business. If your business is already here, we welcome your investment, partnership, and future expansion. If you're not here, as we say in Kiswahili, Karibu Kenya, welcome to Kenya. I saw while I was traveling the US ambassador's post on the embassy website that read, why Africa, why Kenya? Meg, I, it is my hope that I have ably demonstrated in my address that Africa is the continent of opportunities and Kenya means business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that wonderful, wonderful speech. Come on, let's just give him another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for a wonderful delivery. And now we have the answer for why Kenya, why Africa. We are equally able known now. Your Excellency, with your permission, we have three photos we'd like to take. So with your kind indulgence, I'll request that we have the Amcham board kindly just come to the stage. Amcham board, if we can start with the Amcham board, kindly come to the stage. We only have three photos we're going to take, Your Excellency, with your permission, so that we can now come to the conclusion, the reasonable conclusion to this particular event. Amcham board, 
The next picture we are going to take is the USG delegation, so just get ready. But we'll start with the Amcham board, Your Excellency, with your permission, we'll ask you to join them. The next is USG delegation.